Hello, everybody. Uh, today, my name is Rodrigo Rezende. I'm a professor from the postgraduate program in biotechnology from the University of Araraquara, Sao Paulo, Brazil. And today, uh, we'll have the, the lecture uh, entitled Additive Manufacturing in Tissue Engineering. Uh, this lecture will be uh, ministered by uh, Professor Paulo Bartolo, uh, who I have uh, the satisfaction to, to bring to you here uh, today. Uh, Professor Paulo Bartolo is chair of uh, prof chair professor on advanced manufacturing at the School of Mechanical Aerospace and Civil Engineering (MACE) from the University of Manchester, United Kingdom visiting professor at Nanyang University in Singapore, besides collaborator professor in universities in Mexico, Cuba, and Portugal. Dr. Bartolo holds a PhD degree in polymer physics from the University of Reading, uh, a master of science in mechanical engineering, and a licenciatura in mechanical engineering, uh, both from the Technical University of Lisbon in Portugal. At the School of Mace, he is the head of the manufacturing group at the University of Manchester, he is the Industry 4.0 academic lead, member of the management board of the EPSRC and MRC Center for Doctoral Training in Regenerative Medicine and thin leader of the Industry 4.0 Society Challenger uh, area within the digital futures. Uh, so it's a great uh, satisfaction to, to have you here uh, this day, Professor Paulo Bartlo, who is a, a big friend and uh, especially was my uh, advisor during my PhD in Portugal. So thank you again for, for be, being here today, Paulo. Thank you very much. Uh... Rodrigo and uh, uh, thanks for your kind uh, introduction and also for the for the invitation which uh, I gladly accept uh, it's uh, it's an honor to be part of the first uh, uh, digital conference on uh, 3d biofabrication and bioprinting uh, it's always a pleasure to participate in conferences in uh, in Brazil especially organized by by good friends uh, for those who, who, who don't know where is uh, uh, Manchester, uh, let me tell you that Manchester is uh, uh, a third of, uh, of the UK, um, half away between uh, London and uh, Edinburgh. It's a um, highly industrialized uh, area, but uh, also surrounded by very beautiful places like the Lake District and uh, the Peak District. It is also the home of uh, uh, the University of Manchester, which is uh, uh, the largest uh, single campus university in the UK, quite close to the, to the city, to the city centre. Um, for a, a top university, rankings are always important. So University of Manchester is uh, currently the number 27 in the world. It's also the, the first uh, uh, university in Europe in terms of social and uh, environmental impact and the third in the, in the world. And uh, it has been the home of uh, 25 uh, Nobel Prize winners and the majority of our research is considered as uh, world leading or international uh, excellent. Uh, you already mentioned that, uh, but uh, uh, let me recap. So I have uh, multiple roles at university. Um, I'm leading the, the Industry 4.0 uh, initiative, which is about the use of uh, digital tools uh, and technologies, advanced materials, data and automation for sustainable and smart products, services and organizations. We have a different perspective of the industry 4.0. So for us, it's, uh, it's not only a, a technical transformation, but also a complex uh, social uh, and technical transformation of the world. And as part of these roles, I'm uh, coordinating the activities of uh, a large number of academics from different uh, uh, different uh, faculties across the university, and uh, these uh, activities uh, um, act also as uh, the interface between the university and uh, external world, uh, uh, regional government partners, industrial partners, and uh, and funders. I'm also the the head of the manufacturing group, a group of um, academics. Uh, 
uh, doing research uh, around three main domains, uh, innovative manufacturing process, smart manufacturing systems and digital manufacturing, enabled by key technologies. And these key technologies are for us laser-based, uh, additive manufacturing, uh, multi-scale manufacturing, mechatronics and molding and simulation, addressing uh, relevant uh, economic, social and uh, environmental uh, challenges. And finally, I'm leading a group of uh, uh, 50 uh, members, uh, academics, uh, uh, fellows and postdoctoral uh, researchers, PhD students and uh, MSc students, uh, uh, focusing on biofabrication and medical engineering, uh, broadly, um, doing uh, research in terms of uh, advanced materials, mostly degradable materials, but also uh, some research activities around non-degradable materials. Uh, using a wide range of uh, additive manufacturing, but also non-additive and hybrid technologies, focusing on design issues, simulation issues, um, for a wide range of applications such as bone, cartilage, nerve, muscle, or skin uh, regeneration. In all of these, uh, these duties, uh, additive manufacturing is the core technology. And uh, in Manchester, we have uh, um, machines corresponding to all the uh, main uh, additive manufacturing principles commercially available. But we are also developing our own machines, targeting uh, specific applications, uh, addressing some limitations uh, identified in uh, commercial available ones. And one example is this uh, uh, hybrid machine that we, we developed, uh, uh, comprising uh, a multi-extrusion system and a multi-jet plasma system. And using this machine, it is possible to print uh, multiple materials per layer and uh, to use this uh, uh, multi-jet system to do surface modifications per layer also in a controlled way. Uh, and, and this is the ideal machine to create functional graded uh, structures. And we published a couple of papers um, describing the, the, the equipment and also some uh, applications using, uh, using uh, HIT. Another, another machine that we, we are developing is uh, uh, the concept of uh, electrochemical additive manufacturing. This is to print uh, shape memory materials uh, and to support our 4D printing activities, which, uh, which is a highly important piece of, uh, of work. In my in my group, throughout my multiple multiple uh, roles, we are using uh, additive manufacturing uh, for multiple applications, for aerospace applications, for the tooling industry. Uh, additive manufacturing in construction is uh, uh, highly relevant, and more recently also to um, develop bio biosensors and to support all of these uh, activities. Uh, we are also designing uh, new new nozzles, uh, nozzles uh, allowing us to manipulate with uh, different materials uh, um, using screw or pressure to create uh, uh, functional graded filaments, or for example, uh, novel pultrusion, compression, coaxial uh, nozzles with expanding chambers to create much more complex uh, um, filaments. Uh, I told you that uh, we are exploring these two different uh, different applications, and one is, uh, and this is relatively new in my group, is uh, uh, to produce uh, bio biosensors. Um, and one example is a project uh, that we have funded by Bill and uh, Melinda Gates Foundation, where the aim is to develop a biosensor to detect the presence of uh, uh, yellow rust. Um, this, uh, this is a, 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 a very relevant uh, problem, especially in the North Africa, because the yellow rust is responsible for uh, the lose-up of 25% uh, of the global uh, wheat yield. And it's uh, uh, very difficult to, to detect. It uh, can be visually detected after 14 days of infection, but at this stage, uh, uh, no countermeasures can be taken. So within this project, we are, um, first of all, trying to mimic the structure of the leaf. Um, at the bottom of this slide, uh, I have uh, a scanning electron microscopy image and an optical uh, image showing the surface of, uh, of a leaf, um, showing also the, 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 the micro grooves uh, that characterize the leaf, and also these uh, uh, circular structures which uh, uh, corresponds to uh, vertical channels in the leaf uh, called stomata 
And uh, it's through these tomato channels that uh, the, the pathogens penetrate uh, deeper in the, in the plant. These tomatoes uh, are opening and closing depending on the environmental conditions, mainly um, temperature, humidity. So we are trying to mimic this uh, by developing uh, a multi-layer biosensor. The first, uh, the first layer um, must have these uh, 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 morphing capabilities, uh, so the ability to open these channels and close the channels depending on the environmental conditions, and also the ability to um, provide the, 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 the necessary support for the germination of the, of the, of the pathogens. And then we'll have a, 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 sensing, uh, a sensing layer uh, basically formed by a nitrogel containing sucrose that will detect the, the, the pathogen um, due to the production of, uh, of glucose, uh, which induces a, a, a color change that is detected by, by a camera. I have a movie to illustrate the, the, the concept. This was uh, extracted from a, a program um, broadcasted last year by BBC um, uh, highlighting uh, the use of uh, uh, IT technologies and uh, advanced materials and advanced technologies for uh, agricultural applications, and uh, they highlighted our our project. Z spore. It enters the sensor biologically engineered to mimic the crop, like a kind of fire alarm. The sensor sets off an early alert. They can all be linked up, warning other farmers weeks before any damage is visible and they can be 3D printed. These... More, more recently, we, we started also uh, a collaboration with uh, colleagues from uh, the Department of uh, Materials uh, at the University of Manchester and also with colleagues from uh, uh, Chapman University in the United States, um, focusing on the, the development of uh, uh, pH responsive uh, uh, nano and, uh, and microgels, and we published a couple of papers around this, uh, this work. In terms of tissue engineering, which is the, the core of my talk today, we are exploring additive manufacturing for two main approaches. One is the so-called scaffold-based approach. So we are using uh, uh, different materials and different additive manufacturing technologies to produce these uh, uh, three-dimensional porous structures. And the second one, um, um, we are using different types of uh, additive manufacturing to print bio wings. Uh, this is the, the so-called bioprinting approach, uh, allowing us to create cell-laden constructs. And uh, this is quite interesting because it's uh, it's a, uh, uh, an approach that uh, allows us to think about uh, strategies to print these materials directly into the body. Um, we are exploring this for 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 skin and for cartilage. Cartilage is. Uh, relatively recent in the in the group, but in terms of uh, of skin, we started long time ago uh, a project focusing on uh, in situ skin printing. Uh, this comprises a machine and the bio wings. A machine is uh, is a is a normal mechanical engineering machine, a machine that comprises uh, a scanning device to scan the body of the patient, uh, determining the extension of the of the lesions. And then this information is used to control another printing uh, uh, system that prints uh, uh, different, uh, different bio wings to create a synthetic uh, uh, and artificial uh, skin. Um, we investigated uh, a wide range of materials as potential um, bio wings, but in the last uh, three years, we focus on pectin. And we focus on pectin for a couple of, uh, of reasons. First, uh, it's not a, a, a commonly used material. Um, it is uh, um, an hydrophilic and uh, uh, biocompatible material um, with gelling capabilities, uh, exudate uh, absorption properties, but presenting a, a lack of uh, um, biochemical cues, which for us is, a, is an advantage because uh, it means that we can tailor, we can decorate uh, 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 pectin according to our to our needs. We focus also on a, a, a photo curable uh, additive manufacturing approach. So um, first of all, it was necessary to functionalize pectin. We have done that using uh, uh, metacrylate and dendrite, uh, and we consider different levels of functionalization, uh, different levels of uh, metacrylation to create uh, pre polymers with. Uh, different uh, real mechanical uh, properties. And then we uh, um, 
prepare a, a, a protocol to print the, this bioink. Um, so the, the pectin was decorated with uh, RGDs, encapsulated uh, uh, human allodermal fibroblasts. Um, we had calcium chloride uh, into the polymer solution to slightly increase the, the, the viscosity through an ionic cross-linking to guarantee a good printability of the bioink. And then the, the bioink is printed and uh, um, finally cross-linked uh, through uh, a UV uh, curing uh, uh, reaction. The amount of uh, calcium chloride was uh, investigated and uh, optimized regarding the uh, flow uh, properties uh, of our material. And uh, we uh, explore also different types of uh, photo initiators and uh, the amount of photo initiator was also optimi optimized uh, regarding the uh, curing kinetics and also the uh, biomechanical properties of the final, the final gel. Uh, preliminary results show that uh, after 14 days post printing cells were live, um, creating cell networks and also able to produce their own uh, uh, extracellular matrix. But we were not totally happy with, uh, with the chemistry. Um, so uh, metacrylate polymerization is a uh, um, chain grow polymerization process, um, inhibited by oxygen, uh, creating uh, non-homogeneous networks, uh, um, characterized also by relatively slow reaction, uh, reaction rates. So we decided to investigate a different chemistry. Um, we focus on uh, uh, thiolene polymerization, which is uh, a step growth polymerization process, uh, more efficient, uh, faster, uh, and, uh, and uh, also not inhibited by uh, oxygen. And again, uh, we decorated pectin with uh, uh, RGDs uh, and also with uh, MMPs, allowing us to gradually increase the free volume uh, available to accommodate uh, uh, the cell spreading uh, process. And then we start testing uh, the, best, uh, the best way to create the artificial, the artificial skin. And the, the strategy is illustrated in this slide. So first we print the pectin uh, with uh, uh, fibroblasts. After that, we submerge the, the printed material in culture media during uh, uh, seven days. And then we print uh, uh, the, the bioink containing uh, carotinocytes, and again submerge the, the, the material uh, in culture media during seven days. And after that, we uh, expose the upper layers to air, creating an air liquid interface to induce uh, stratification. Uh, and uh, we obtain, uh, using this approach, um, an artificial skin with uh, high similarities with the human skin not only in terms of uh, its organization, in terms of uh, the shape and organization of the cells uh, in the different layers, uh, thickness of the, of, uh, of the layers. We are currently increasing the complexity of, uh, of, our, of our approach, adding other, other types of, uh, of cells. Um, I have uh, also two PhD students that are focusing on this approach, but to create uh, a skin equivalent to uh, study melanoma. This means that uh, we need to change again the, 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 the chemistry because uh, we are no longer using a UV uh, curing approach. We need to change the, the, the photo initiators being, uh, being used and we are also uh, changing uh, to a different, uh, a different um, aerogel. But also for, for, for skin, uh, we are using uh, other technologies rather than uh, uh, additive manufacturing to produce uh, uh, wound dressings. Uh, we reported the, the first work a uh, few years ago um, using uh, polyvinyl alcohol membranes with uh, umbilical cord uh, uh, cells to treat uh, um, significant uh, large uh, skin lesions in, uh, uh, in, uh, in animals. And uh, uh, we have a, a strong partnership also with, uh, with a company in the UK, Matoka, Matoka Holdings, um, where we are using uh, uh, electro spinning to create uh, wound dressings uh, made with uh, specific uh, biocompatible and biodegradable materials, incorporating 
materials that are being developed uh, in partnership with, uh, with Matoka uh, with um, uh, antiviral and uh, antibacterial properties. It's a, it's a kind of a, a synthetic RNA uh, being developed and incorporated in, uh, in, these, uh, in these wound dressings. And uh, we had a couple of, uh, of patents uh, uh, together with, uh, with Matoka. Now, in terms of the scaffold-based approach, uh, bone is probably the best uh, example of our, uh, of our work. Here we are uh, exploring different materials, um, uh, also different technologies, mainly extrusion-based and screw extrusion-based uh, additive manufacturing, but also um, hybrid systems combining extrusion and, uh, and electrospinning. Uh, um, investigating the performance of these scaffolds, both uh, in vitro and, uh, and in vivo, and also trying to uh, develop uh, surface modification approaches to improve the properties of the, of the produced scaffolds. Today, I'm not going to, to provide too much detail about uh, these uh, different materials and the effect of these different materials. Uh, I'm uh, focusing uh, more on uh, uh, recent uh, uh, works related to surface modification, uh, the concept of uh, hierarchical, uh, hierarchical uh, uh, scaffolds. So in terms of uh, surface modification, uh, we published this year one, uh, one paper uh, showing a strategy where uh, the scaffolds were submitted to uh, an acetone vapor annealing uh, uh, process to induce the formation of microporosity on the, on the filaments of the, of the scaffold. Uh, through this method, um, free amorphous regions uh, are delocalized from the surface of the, um, of the filaments and uh, recrystallize on pre-existing uh, uh, crystalline cells, uh, inducing uh, uh, a, a the formation of a hierarchical nanostructure on, uh, on the filaments. The scaffolds were then submitted to, uh, were then doped with uh, dopamine uh, to um, increase uh, uh, not only the hydrophilicity of the, of the scaffolds, but also uh, cell adhesion uh, and uh, uh, cell uh, spreading. Uh, so this, uh, this here, we presented another, another method. In this case, the previous one was uh, tested with um, uh, polycaproactone scaffolds produced using uh, an extrusion-based machine. Uh, in this case, we use uh, uh, structures produced uh, using electrospinning and uh, PLLA. Um, the structures were coated with uh, uh, silica nanoparticles, and the reason for using silica nanoparticles was due to the high surface ratio of the silica nanoparticles and also uh, the biocompatibility uh, of these uh, uh, particles. Uh, this coating mechanism um, increased the strength of the constructs and also the uh, hydrophilicity. And uh, the structures were also uh, doped with uh, uh, dopamine, not only to increase the um, uh, cell adhesion and, uh, and, uh, and spreading, but also the strength of the silica nanoparticles uh, on the, uh, the silica nanoparticles. And as I, as I mentioned, um, in, in all cases, so the, 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 the PLLA uh, uh, meshes uh, and uh, uh, the, the, the treated meshes uh, were able to support uh, cell addition and, uh, and proliferation, but much better results were observed with uh, the, the, the structures uh, uh, modified with this, uh, with this method. We are exploring other, other technologies. So a few years ago, we reported the use of uh, uh, NOH uh, to treat the scaffolds without compromising the mechanical properties. Uh, and uh, our initial results show a, a, a positive effect uh, on the uh, osteogenic differentiation. This year we published a, another paper showing also a positive effect on uh, uh, chondrogenesis. Um, and uh, another strategy was based on coating the scaffolds with uh, P1 protein um, extracted from uh, uh, latex from the rubber tree in Brazil. This is, uh, this is a, a project funded by uh, FAPESP and the University of Manchester. And uh, we obtain uh, very interesting uh, results using this uh, uh, protein, not only in terms of uh, um, um, improving uh, uh, cell adhesion, but also the osteogenic differentiation and also 
and geogenesis. Another area particularly relevant for us is the design and fabrication of uh, hierarchical scaffolds. Uh, we published a paper this year um, um, showing this, uh, this, uh, this uh, approach uh, using uh, an extrusion-based process uh, to create uh, uh, PCL hydroxypatite and multi-wall carbon nanotubes scaffolds. Uh, mimicking the micro and nanoscale structure of, uh, of bone. Uh, in this paper, we, we show that uh, um, the multi-wall carbon nanotubes were aligned along uh, the printing direction, uh, similar to uh, uh, the, the collagen uh, fibrillis in the, in the bone, uh, with um, uh, nano uh, hydroxypatite particles interdispersed between the um, uh, multi-wall carbon nanotubes uh, um, acting as uh, the natural uh, hydroxyapatite crystals in, uh, in bone. Transmission electron microscopy and uh, uh, polarized Raman prove that uh, the multi-wall carbon nanotubes were aligned along the, the, the printing direction and also the presence of the uh, nano uh, hydroxyapatite uh, uh, particles uh, interdispersed around the multi-wall carbon nanotubes. The addition of the, the, the multi-wall carbon nanotubes uh, had uh, um, uh, a positive impact enhancing the osteogenic uh, uh, differentiation and also increasing uh, uh, alkaline phosphatase, uh, collagen, uh, and uh, uh, osteocalcin expressions. But nevertheless, we need to do further research to um, determine the best ratio between uh, multi-wall carbon nanotubes uh, and uh, uh, hydroxyapatite uh, um, to improve uh, not only the uh, physicochemical uh, properties of the scaffold, but also the cell uh, response. We also designing and producing uh, hierarchical scaffolds through a combination of multiple techniques. Um, again, this year, we published a paper in 3D printing uh, and additive manufacturing. It was also highlighted in the cover, where we created dual-scale scaffolds using uh, a, a setup combining uh, uh, extrusion additive manufacturing with uh, non-rotational uh, electrospinning. And uh, more recently, we published another paper in additive manufacturing where we describe a different setup, again, using uh, um, extrusion-based process, but also uh, a rotational uh, electrospinning uh, uh, system. And the results show that by uh, optimizing the processing conditions, it was possible to obtain uh, um, high mass density with uh, highly aligned fibers uh, embedded in the, in the scaffold. Um, we controlled the, the, the alignment of the, of, the, of the fibers by um, increasing the velocity of, uh, the, the rotational velocity in the electrospinning uh, electro uh, uh, system. And by increasing the, 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 the alignment of the fibers, uh, we increase the, the, the cell anisotropy and uh, a more organized uh, uh, cytoskeleton. Bone is, uh, uh, as, uh, as you know, uh, piezoelectric properties and also reverse piezoelectric properties. So we are also uh, focusing on uh, the concepts of uh, electroactive scaffolds and uh, piezoelectric scaffolds to enhance uh, both osteogenesis and uh, angiogenesis. Um, an example uh, is the, the, the work that we are doing. This is uh, uh, also in partnership with uh, a couple of colleagues and uh, uh, colleagues in, uh, in Brazil, colleagues in Araras. Um, and uh, in this case, we, we explore the use of uh, um, electroactive scaffolds and uh, uh, electrical stimulation um, to regenerate uh, uh, critical size uh, bone defects uh, created in the calvary of rats. And we consider different, uh, different uh, um, uh, routes. So one is the, the, the natural regeneration route, uh, which was the, the, the reference for us with and without uh, 
um, uh, electrical stimulation. In the second case, we filled the defect with uh, polycaprolactone scaffolds, uh, again, with and without electrical stimulation. And uh, uh, finally, uh, we filled the defect with uh, electroactive scaffolds, uh, PCR scaffolds containing uh, um, relatively small amounts of, uh, of graphene, around 1%, and again, with and without electrical uh, stimulation. The uh, photomicrography images of the, of the defect uh, are um, uh, presented in this, uh, in this slide. And uh, the results show that uh, in, the, in, the, in the control case, so the natural bone regeneration, uh, it was possible to observe the formation of a, a thin connective tissue. And uh, in the case of uh, uh, applying electrical stimulation, uh, the presence of uh, pockets of uh, new bone at the edges of the defect across the, across the edges of the, of the defect. In the case of uh, uh, PCL scaffolds with and without uh, electrical stimulation, we observe the formation of a connective tissue uh, around the filaments of the, of the scaffold and also islands of new bone uh, embedded in this connective tissue. And uh, uh, by applying electrical stimulation, we observe uh, a much more organized new bone uh, uh, being formed. In the case of uh, uh, electroactive scaffolds uh, with and without electrical stimulation, um, we observe uh, much higher levels of new bone and also much more organized. And this was also confirmed with uh, um, uh, photomicrography images, in this case, stained with uh, Mason 3 coal. Um, in this case, uh, uh, the blue dye identifies the uh, connective tissue and also uh, primary uh, mineralized bone, depending on the uh, intensity of the, of the color, uh, while the red dye uh, corresponds to mineralized bone. Um, so again, uh, the results show that uh, uh, in the case of uh, um, electroactive scaffolds with electrical stimulation, uh, the amount of new bone formed is uh, higher and the bone is much more uh, organized. The uh, small, tiny black dots uh, uh, in the PCL graphene scaffolds corresponds to, to graphene. And uh, these uh, blue-red uh, uh, zones, these mix of blue and red uh, zones corresponds to uh, tissue uh, maturation. Uh, recent uh, recent uh, uh, results, in this case using different materials, uh, using uh, uh, multiple, multiple carbon on the tubes, um, demonstrates what we, we observed before. Um, so a very positive impact in terms of uh, bone regeneration also on uh, uh, the angiogenesis uh, process. We are also pushing our research to close to the market. And uh, um, a good example is uh, a very large project that I'm coordinating called uh, uh, Bone Bricks. Um, we designed this project um, three to four years ago when I visited uh, uh, Turkey. And uh, I was impressed with a uh, with problem that Turkey was facing with uh, the Syrian refugees displaced uh, to Turkey. So uh, Turkey um, owes uh, around 4 million Syrian refugees. And uh, uh, on their time, half of them were requiring uh, medical treatment. Among these 2 million, 70% of them presented uh, musculoskeletal uh, problems. Uh, 47 presenting open fractures and uh, very complex fractures uh, and uh, around uh, 100,000 uh, people were affected by large bone defects and uh, um, the only solution uh, the doctors uh, had was uh, amputation. So we decided to uh, develop a strategy to address these, uh, these um, uh, problem. We approach uh, a university in Turkey, Sabanci University, and also colleagues uh, from the University of Portsmouth, 
um, also uh, a couple of uh, um, clinicians uh, at uh, uh, the Central Manchester University Hospitals, but also at the Kokaeli uh, Training Medical uh, University Hospital in, uh, in Turkey, and also a couple of uh, um, non-governmental uh, organizations uh, like the Syrian Relief, the Syrian British Medical Society, uh, MAG and, uh, and, uh, and others, to develop this project. And this project is the Bone Bricks. And uh, the aim of the, of, the, of the project is to develop and uh, implement uh, a patient-specific uh, prosthetic to fill the bone loss due to injury using uh, a combination of uh, biodegradable and biocompatible modular pieces, uh, the so-called bone bricks, from a palette of shapes and sizes that fit together in a Lego-like uh, uh, way to form the, the processes. So once assembled, they create a, a nolo prosthesis and uh, this internal structure, this internal olo uh, cage is filled with uh, uh, calcium sulfate paste containing uh, uh, antibiotics. We have a, a commercial partner uh, which will uh, be responsible for the commercial exploitation of the, of the technology being uh, uh, generated. Uh, we are developing a couple of uh, software tools because uh, the generation of the right type of shapes and sizes of these bone bricks uh, is performed uh, in an automatic way. We are also developing uh, the software tools to send the information uh, to uh, the printing machines to print these different shapes, which uh, are being easily assembled by the, the, the clinician. And uh, for the first time, we are designing uh, um, uh, scaffolds, or so our bone bricks, uh, according to anatomical data. We are also investigating different types of uh, printing strategies, creating uh, uh, structures with uh, uh, a gradient of uh, uh, porosity. Um, unfortunately, due to the, to the uh, COVID-19 pandemic, uh, um, we delayed the animal tests uh, to the beginning of, uh, of October and, uh, and then um, the aim is also to run ethically approved human trials in Turkey uh, with the support of uh, uh, Tubitac. Um, as, as I mentioned along this, uh, this, uh, this presentation, um, one of our aims is to um, design and develop structures with uh, optimized uh, uh, properties. This is very complex uh, uh, because, for example, if you change the, the, the material preparation method, you change the rheological behavior of the, of, the, of the material, and then we need to adjust the processing parameters. Uh, by changing the processing parameters, this has an impact on the scaffold design and an impact on the morphological development. And as a consequence, we are changing the chemical, physical, bio properties of the final scaffolds. So we need to understand and to establish uh, models uh, correlating all of these effects. And this is really complex. It's a, it's a, a multidimensional uh, problem. We are starting doing this uh, through um, a large number of uh, synchrotron projects that we have been awarded and we are performing studies in, uh, in Oxford at the Diamond uh, uh, Center. Uh, two years ago, we, we published the first paper uh, uh, investigating the in situ morphological development uh, during the printing, uh, the printing process. And since then, we uh, keep developing uh, models, allowing us, for example, to correlate the effect of processing conditions in terms of the crystalline structure, uh, size of the crystalline structures, uh, orientation of the crystalline structures, and the impact on the mechanical properties and also on the biological, the biological uh, properties. The work was uh, highlighted by uh, many covers and uh, uh, one of the papers was uh, uh, selected as uh, one of the best papers published by uh, macromolecular journals last, uh, last year. But as I mentioned on the, on the, on the early beginning of my, my, my talk, 
uh, within my my group we are not focus not only focusing on uh, the use of uh, biodegradable materials we are also uh, using uh, non-degradable uh, materials and uh, I'm going to finish my talk uh, uh, with an example of, uh, of it. It's a project related to the design uh, and fabrication of uh, the novel bone fixation plates. Um, and the first problem that we, we, we target was the, the stress shielding problem and uh, consequently the, the bone loss uh, uh, issues associated with this stress shielding. Uh, which is due to the mechanical mismatch between the, the, the mechanical properties of the, of the implant and the mechanical properties of, uh, of bone. We solved this, uh, this uh, uh, problem uh, using topology optimization uh, to redesign the shape of uh, commercial available plates uh, printed using uh, additive manufacturing uh, technologies in this case, uh, uh, using uh, titanium uh, 60, 64. Basically, topology optimi optimization is used to remove materials from uh, areas where the material is no longer needed uh, and uh, decrease the equivalent stiffness of, uh, of the plates. Um, we run topology optimization considering uh, uh, different, uh, different uh, um, loads and uh, volume reductions and uh, um, as I mentioned we use uh, um, two different technologies, uh, powder bed fusion technologies but uh, using different principles to print the, the, the fibers, one to print the, the, the plates, one was uh, electron beam melting and the other one was selective laser, laser melting. Um, the plates were as I mentioned uh, optimized uh, considering different loading conditions and different volume, uh, volume reductions and uh, uh, by the end, uh, it was possible to obtain a couple of uh, new designs with uh, um, properties uh, in, the, in the cortical bone uh, uh, region. So we were very happy with, uh, with, these, uh, with, these, uh, with these results. We also studied the, the, the plate uh, uh, cell interface uh, and compared the results with uh, commercial available uh, plates. And again, the results were very, very positive, uh, showing that uh, without any post-processing uh, operations, our plates were able to create a much better uh, interface with, uh, with, uh, with cells than uh, uh, commercial available plates. So with this, uh, with this project, we, we solved um, the stress shielding problem. Uh, now we are focusing on the second problem, uh, which is related to the second surgery. So, um, these are uh, non-degradable, non-degradable uh, plates, um, and uh, there is no need to to have the plate uh, after the the, um, the 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 healing process. Uh, and besides that, there are some problems associated with uh, keeping the the the, the plates uh, in the body, um, related, for example, to the release of, uh, of ions and uh, the possible uh, carcinogenic effect of, uh, of uh, those ion release. So what, uh, what we are starting now um, is uh, um, a, similar, a similar approach. Um, use topology optimization to redesign these plates, but in this case, using a combination of um, uh, biodegradable materials, polymers, uh, ceramic materials, and also biodegradable uh, metals, and then uh, additive manufacturing to produce the, the optimal designed uh, designed uh, uh, plates. And we are going to perform a, a, a completely different range of um, of, uh, of tests. One of our ideas is uh, also to use these plates as uh, a drug delivery plates. So it is by knowing the degradation process and by controlling the degradation process, it will be possible to uh, print at specific positions, uh, for example, bisphosphonates that will be uh, controlled, released, uh, um, designing these plates uh, for uh, osteoporotic bone applications. And with this, uh, I complete my, my presentation. Again, it was uh, a great pleasure to deliver, the, to deliver this, uh, this keynote. Uh, unfortunately, uh, it will be not possible 
to be face to face to you to to ask your your questions um but feel free to send me an email to contact me by any other means and uh, i i really hope to be uh, able to return to brazil soon and uh, who knows maybe to participate in the second uh, uh, edition of this uh, digital conference on 3D biofabrication uh, and bioprinting. Thank you very much for your attention. And again, thank you very much, Rodrigo, for the invitation. Thank you. Many thank you. thanks, Paulo. It's uh, a very rich presentation. Uh, it's always good to, to see you presenting and showing all your results. And uh, we can see a myriad of uh, materials, um, techniques, devices and other issues. Uh, it's very good to see uh, how this technology has uh, achieved the even the social uh, way, uh, as you, you showed uh, about this uh, Syrian refugees project. Uh, it's very good. Uh, I, I would like to I would, uh, uh, would like to, to ask you a question. Uh, since I I watch you <laughs> and know you since uh, always 20 years, less a bit, and uh, just recording, uh, rem memorizing that uh, you organize many VRAP conferences, uh, five or six six uh, editions, if I'm not wrong, and uh, I would like to ask you. How you see? Have you seen uh, this uh, evolution of uh, scaffolds uh, since that time, 15 years ago, and how these uh, processes involved are uh, being uh, pro uh, progressed? Uh, how is the, the success of this uh, scaffolds application? How how have you seen uh, this this follow? Yeah. Uh so it's uh, it's interesting that uh, that you mentioned that we we know each other for a long time and uh if we if we re return to the to let's say 15 years ago uh, i organized virap for the first time in the 2003 uh, on that time uh, the number of uh, colleagues uh, working on the use of additive manufacturing for medical applications was uh, relatively small and uh, it was possible to know the names of uh, everybody now it's totally impossible so the number of researchers working in the area it's incredibly high and uh, and that's why the the field is progressing so so fast um, one of these days uh, uh, someone uh, um, asked me okay what about uh, um, examples of uh, um, successful products? In fact, there are not too many. There are few companies uh, um, selling uh, um, these uh, um, scaffolds. Uh, so there are some examples, but probably not too many as uh, we could expect a few years ago. Um, there is a big trend now uh, related to uh, bio bioprinting, and also few successful companies appearing and commercializing some some bio wings. But it's it's important to 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 pay attention to the to the scale. So additive manufacturing is uh, now mentioned by everybody. Um, and it's, a, it's a, a relatively young technology. So additive manufacturing emerged 30 years ago uh, in, the, in the 1980s. The first time biofabrication was uh, coined was in 2006 uh, in an event organized by Vaisun. Uh, Vladimir was there and a couple of other colleagues. So we are talking about... Uh, about uh, a very young uh, uh, domain. Um, so I, I, I think that uh, looking uh, into the time scale, I think that we, we the community has shifted a lot and um, probably in, uh, in 10 years time, we will see a totally different uh, 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 field. 
Yes, and even considering all the IT technologies that uh, have been in uh, uh, growth uh, and, uh, and also evol uh, evolved in this time, so in considering images, treatment, uh, simulations, and other issues that I, yeah. I didn't mention. And so I think yeah. I, uh, inter artificial intelligence, for example. So I yeah, think yeah. All yeah. people from computer science are also moving to the, to the field. And uh, I have no doubts that they will have uh, a tremendous impact in the, in the, in the field. Um, so in five years' time, uh, we'll see a totally different uh, uh, domain. It's growing very fast. Yes. And we, we get, uh, we, we get uh, very happy and glad for, for that because we're uh, working on that, uh, helping somehow. And uh, we are here and uh, I hope we'll be there to see all these uh, developments. That's Yeah, that's yeah, yeah. This, uh, this reminds me of so, um, something that we, we created a uh, uh, long time ago. Uh, you were a key person. Uh, so at that time you were in Portugal and uh, you were a key person putting together uh, the Biofab network. I, I don't remember if you if you remember it. Yes. But it was it was a big initiative exploiting the the advantages that uh, uh, we have in South America, uh, not only in terms of uh, uh, unique materials, but also unique expertise in uh, in molding, in uh, additive manufacturing, uh, uh, in imaging. Uh, so one of these days, we need to create a, a, a new uh, um, biofab network. Yeah, I can't forget this. <laughs> That's uh, really a, a very important uh, project for, for Brazil and Latin America, uh, even also Portugal and Spain. Uh, yeah. Paulo, I, I'm sure that uh, would, uh, would uh, be possible to keep uh, talking here for many hours <laughs> it would be a pleasure uh, but uh, by now uh, i have to finish this and i, I am sure that the audience uh, would be very satisfied to hearing uh, all your words and uh, i hope to to have you here personally uh, again soon after this pandemic time thank you thank again you. thank you rodrigo and uh, i wish you all the best for the for the conference uh, i have no doubts that uh, it will be a, a success Thank you, Paulo. Bye-bye. Thank you. Bye. Bye-bye.